Thank you so much. Good evening to everyone here and watching around the world. Uh, I'm excited to discuss this critical topic around the global refugee crisis. As a trained academic, however, I can't just answer a question. I have to say all the things that are wrong with the question before I can answer it. And for me, the question of refugee crisis in the global landscape is itself misleading and problematic. To talk about refugees as a crisis is to ask the wrong question at the wrong time. Rather than beginning with the entirely reasonable question of what do we do with these people who have arrived here, we must first ask an equally reasonable but far more urgent question. What are the social, cultural, economic, and intellectual conditions that led these people to our doors? Before we deliberate about what to do with Mexicans at the southern U.S. border, many of whom assume a de facto refugee status, we must instead consider the trade agreements and exploitative labor practices that actively undermine the possibility of prosperity within Mexico. Prior to wrestling with the question of Syrian refugees, we have to answer the years of American foreign policy, and we have to consider the years of American foreign policy that have helped to destabilize the region. By framing the issue differently, we not only become more intellectually honest, but we're also better equipped to arrive at sustainable solutions. We must address the crisis of citizenship. Today, we very easily and comfortably talk about our respective countries as our homes. We decide, based on the arbitrarily defined borders of the country, who is and who isn't a member of our national community. It's important to remember, however, that the idea of the nation state is a relatively new one. Prior to the last 150 years or so, our determinations of what made people, who we never actually meet in real life, part of the same community as us, were far more fluid, far more complicated. The difference between us and them, which is so often appealed to when rejecting refugees, is often, though not always, as large as we'd like to believe. To solve the refugee issue, we must first commit to reimagining citizenship in more interesting, dynamic, and practical ways. We must also consider the crisis of memory. Far too often, the people clamoring to close the borders forget that they themselves were beneficiaries of openness, either as former refugees or otherwise desperate immigrants looking for new possibilities in a new land. Rather than closing the door behind us once we've safely passed through the door, we must do the difficult but necessary work of creating sites of safety for those who come after us. We must remember who we are. We must also remember the horrors that have occurred when we have failed to properly tend to refugees. Consider, for example, in the, in the 1930s, when the US and Europe refused to provide refugee status to Jewish brothers and sisters, desperately fleeing Nazi Germany. Our moral failure contributed to one of the greatest atrocities in human history. We cannot repeat such acts of moral indifference and outright evil by failing to remember our mistakes. Speaking of mistakes, we must take seriously the question and the crisis of supremacy. Simply put, we live in a world where we believe that some lives are inherently worth more than others. This belief, undergirded by white supremacy, Orientalism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism, allows us to view some lives as worthy of protection and others as disposable. It allows us to see some cultures as compatible with our society and others as an inherent threat to our way of life. This doesn't mean that there aren't real and tangible political and cultural differences that we must consider. We must do that. But even those differences can't be properly understood or reckoned with until we address our core biases. And speaking of biases, we must tackle the crisis of representation, particularly in the media. The media, both traditional and new forms, offers most citizens their window into the human experience. The media shapes how we identify and assess social problems. The media gives us a sense of what our available solutions are. The media tells us whose lives matter and whose don't. As long as we are beholden to a narrow range of corporate media sources, themselves committed to a narrow range of ideas and shot through with the very biases that I just referred to, we will struggle to think outside the constraints of the current moment. So, what do we do? The million dollar question that all academics hate to answer. We must resist. We must address each of these crises with the belief that organized people can and do defeat organized power. That means we vote, we march, we think, we boycott, we teach, we write, we sing, we debate, all in ways that undermine the current power structure and create the possibility for freedom and safety for refugees around the world. Thank you so very kindly.